As I mentioned, Chris is joining us now live in the studio. Chris, good to see you. Welcome hey, good back. Good to see you, too. You, you, I was reading about this album. This is Fine China. The album is called X. It's going to come out sometime this summer. And you said you wanted to take the Quincy Jones approach to this. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, well, you know, when we composed the album and put it together, I wanted to put, you know, a lot of producers and a lot of writers in the same kind of place and have like a camp. So it's like a camaraderie and a chemistry between everybody. So um, it, it naturally flows easier in the studio like that. And everybody's energy, they can kind of be more creative. So I wanted to kind of take that approach. You're 23 years old. I mentioned you, you came out with your first music when you were 16. You were discovered at 13, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. When you look at your music today versus the music you were putting out at 16, 17 years old, what's the biggest difference in it? The biggest difference, uh, I would just say just me being like older now you know as far as when i first started I, is, the subject matter might have still been a little bit you know in in my age bracket so a now more i immature yeah so now i think with my music is maturing so i have a lot more to talk about you know whether it be personal relationship trials and tribulations um just me as a young 23 year old man so i think that can in a nutshell can you know sum it up for how mature the, the album can get there. <laughs> you, you've been here several times over the last few years. The biggest difference that I would note and tell our viewers about is right now you are agreeing to sit down and talk about things oh, yeah. that, that you hadn't talked about over the last three years. And I'm talking about the incident in 2009 yeah, absolutely. with Rihanna where you were, were charged with a felony and convicted of yeah, a felony in that. Absolutely. You say in the interviews that I've read over the last couple of days even that you are a changed man, that you're different. How are you different? Well, you know, for me, I've been humbled by the whole experience, you know, from me losing everything, you know, to, to me having to regain, you know, public opinion or whatever it is. But most importantly, you know, knowing that what I did was totally wrong, you know, and having to kind of deal with myself and kind of forgive myself in the same breath. And, you know, being able to apologize to, you know, Rihanna and being able to be that that man that can be a man, you know? And yet you know there are cynics out there, there are skeptics out there, Chris, who are going to say, well, he's a changed man because he's out there selling a new album. <laughs> and image is important if he yeah. wants to sell that album. I was looking back over the last year, even the last several months, there was the fight with Frank Ocean, yeah, there everything. was the fight with Drake. I even looked at some Instagram <laughs> pictures that you posted back in December. Yeah. They weren't the most wholesome pictures. So yeah. do you understand where some people might say, I'm not sure he's changed yet. I'm going to wait and see. Let's see what he's like six months after this album comes out. I mean, out. well, I think everybody's entitled to their opinion. For me, it's just a learning process. You know, I have to just take it one day at a time. I can't make everybody like me. I think for my album and what I'm promoting as far as a single or whatever it is, it's just about me being positive. And everything that I'm doing with my music is hopefully to inspire the world and inspire people that, you know, have been in my situation or even anybody who's trying to learn from me, you know? I, I, was, I was reading some headlines over the weekend online that said that you were either off with Rihanna <laughs> or still on with Rihanna. First of all, clear it up for me. What is the status yeah, of your relationship? No, no, we're, we're fine. And, you know, I think in the actual uh, interview that they try to depict that, they, they miss... They got they got it wrong. I think they interviewed me from an old interview that was maybe like a so year. So you're prior. together as a couple. Yeah, yeah right everything now. is good. We're fine. You, you know when that was announced, the reaction was strong from a lot of people, and they as looked always, that's oh, all news. Well, that's, but there were strong <laughs> emotions. <laughs> a lot of people worried. I think about her yeah. and the choices that she was making, mm -hmm. and they thought this is going to end badly. Yeah. How do you respond to that? Well, you know, I think it's just me proving myself once again. And also just me being a man and, you know, knowing that what I did was wrong and never doing it again. So as far as me and her are concerned, she knows my heart and I know her heart. So I'm not really focused on, you know, the negative. Everything about it is positive for me. I've learned through, I did my 52 weeks of, you know, counseling and learned that it was absolutely wrong, you know. And Counseling? And did you go through therapy or was it just it, counseling? It was counseling. It was domestic violence counseling. And we did 52-week program every Monday in Virginia. You know, I remember going and, you know, just sitting in there and just like, Yo, why did I do what I did, you know, and really wanting to just get help. You and know? you're sure it will never happen again. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Here's what Rihanna said about you in a recent interview. I thought I hated Chris, and I realized it was love that was tarnished. It looked like hate because it was ugly, it was angry, it was inflamed, it was tainted. And I realized that what it was is I have to forgive him because I cared about him still. And the minute I let go of that, I started living again. You, you understand that if you behave badly again, you're going to damage not only your relationship, but her relation, her Absolutely. her reputation as well. Absolutely. So that's why I'm moving forward, positive. People in this country, it seems, they love to build someone up. And bring them down. 
And then they, they enjoy standing on the sidelines and watching as someone goes down. But it's also been said people like comeback stories. Absolutely. Do you think that the people who have been your harshest critics have it in their hearts to give you a chance at a comeback? I think, for me, it's about proving myself to my fans. And I think my fans have been the number one support for me. So I think, you know, the naysayers are going to have their opinions. Any, any, anything I do, whether it be, you know, walk down the street, I might say something to somebody. You know, it's not going to be always, you know. Chris is the greatest, you know, so I'm not going to focus my life on trying to please those people. Only thing I can do is please my family, please myself, and please her, and, you know, my fans. Chris, I appreciate you sitting my down. Man. It's nice to see you again. Thank you, brother. And you can check out Chris's new video in its entirety on Today.com. Uh, that's going to be up there a little Let later this morning. Savannah? <laughs>